Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to B-Sides Las Vegas. Uh, this talk is Discovering RDP Vulnerabilities by Reading PDFs, presented by Dora Dali. Uh, we'd like to thank our sponsors, especially our diamond sponsor, Adobe, uh, as well as our gold sponsors, Blue Cat, SimGrip, Conductor One. Uh, it's uh, with their support that we're able to do this event, along with other sponsors and donors. Um, a reminder that cell phones are distracting. Uh, these talks are being streamed live. Uh, if you have, uh, as a courtesy, please put your cell phones on silent. Uh, even the vibrate is really annoying. Uh, YouTube can hear them. Uh, if you have questions at the end, there'll be time. Uh, there's a mic right there behind the projector. You know, feel free to come up and use that. Thank you very much. All right. So um, welcome to my talk. Uh, the talk is going to be unveiling the then uh, discovering RDP vulnerabilities using PDF files. Now, I know it might start, so, sound very interesting. What is the connection between RDP and PDF files? And this is what we're going to talk about. So first, let me, let me introduce myself. So my name is Dor Dali. I'm the head of security research at Ciolo. Um, I have some experience in the AppSec and the infrastructure security um, world. Uh, over 10 years in the cybersecurity field. Uh, pretty much vast background from all different aspects. And now I'm the, lead, I'm the head of security research at Ciolo. Now what we do in Ciolo, pretty simple, secure access. We help companies to secure their, their, their high risk access between their clients and the target computers and servers. And this is what we also research. We focus our research on remote access applications and remote access protocols. Now, I do have a question for the audience before we start. How many of you, when you do some security research, just read, read a big PDF file from A to Z, and just by that, manage to find five different CVEs in a high use protocol? Because this is what I did. And when I talk about highly used protocol, I talk about something that we are all familiar with, which is RDP. So if you are not familiar with RDP, this is the, the window, uh, the dialogue that you most likely seen in your when you use your computer. And you use it in order to connect to a target server. So if you want to have some access to a remote server, you just use this uh, dialog and you connect to a target server that you want. Now RDP has been researched for quite a while, but it has all different aspects and this is a pretty big protocol. Now one part of this protocol is something that is called RDP Gateway. Now what is the RDP Gateway? RDP Gateway is a role in Windows Server that allows you to have some kind of RDP proxy that you can install in your DMZ. So this is a server role, and it allows you to create an RDP tunnel between a client that is outside in the wide internet to a server which is inside your on-prem environment. And this works by creating a TLS tunnel between the client and the RDP gateway, and then the RDP gateway connects to the target computer. So it's very important to remember those uh, names, the RDP gateway and the target server, because those are the stuff that I will use throughout the presentation. So now we that we know what is RDP gateway, we need to think of a research methodology. How we can research this thing that is called RDP gateway. So I decided to take a quite a unique uh, methodology for the research. I decided not to use Jidra, not to use IDA, not to use WinDBG, and of course not to use the crowd favorite, Calc. I just decided to read the manual. This is what I did. Just read the manual from A to Z and understood how it works. So when we talk about the manual, we also used a little bit more stuff for the research. We used some previous research, and there was a little bit amount of research on the RDP gateway. Um, so we used that. We used some protocol analysis tools. We, the one that most famous is Wireshark, just to understand how exactly the protocol looks like. We did use a lot some open source implementations. Now RDP is a closed protocol, right? It's built by Microsoft and it's pretty closed, but there are all different open source implementations for this protocol, such as FreeRDP is the most known one. But the one thing that we used the most was protocol specs. Now, if you're not familiar with protocol specs, so actually Microsoft releases on their website a list of 1,000 protocols, a PD, list of PDFs for one, over 1,000 protocols that they are using in their systems. And one of them is the RDP protocol. So all the information about how to implement and how to use the RDP 
is over there on their, their website. So also, one of the protocol specs is the RDP Gateway protocol spec, which is called MSTSGU, which means Terminal Services Gateway Server Protocol. So that's what we did. We just read this protocol. And this is a small glimpse for what this protocol looks like and how it works. So first of all, we do see that the connection starts with an HTTP connection. So in order to create a TLS tunnel between the client and the RDP gateway, we start by creating an HTTP, a TLS connection between the two. Now, after we created the TLS connection, we have some version and capability negotiation in order to tell the RDP gateway what we support and what we don't. And by the end of it, we get two things. We get a tunnel and a channel. Now, in order to understand what are tunnels and channels, it's pretty simple. I'll use some, I'll use some analogy. Um, so the tunnel is like the road that you have, and the channel is like the lanes on the road that you have. So that means that you get one tunnel, and you can get more than one channel on that tunnel. Why do you get more than one, ton more, more than one channel? You'll have to bear with me for the end of the presentation to understand that, because this is very important, not for the first vulnerability, but to the second one. So this is how it works. Now, we need to find our first culprit, right? We need to find our first vulnerability. That's what we are here for, right? We are all looking for vulnerabilities. So we looked at the PDF file, and we did notice a very nice pattern. Each and every time that the RDP gateway sends a message to the client that connects to the RDP gateway, it, it explicitly says that the message needs to be null terminated. Each and every time, they, say, they specifically says null character. But there were two different instances where they didn't say it. They actually said just to send a message with no null character. So we did it. We, as we said, we are following the manual, right? We are just reading the manual, and we are following what Microsoft tell, told us to do. So we sent those two messages with no null termination. And we actually noticed that the client kept on crashing. Pretty interesting. Just by following the manual, I can get an RDP client to crash. That doesn't make sense, of course. But that's what, that's what happened. Now, I'll talk a little bit about what are those messages. So the consent message is a message that shows up once you connect to the RDP gateway. It allows you to, to accept the EULA, for example. And the service message allows an admin to send, for example, to tell everyone, hey, this server is going to be shut down in a couple minutes. So those are the stuff. And let's see it live right now. So as we can see on the left side on the screen, we started an RDP gateway. And here we are connecting to a server using the RDP gateway. So we got connected to a local server on the, target, on the place where we are running the server. And now we sent a server message with an null termination. And now we're going to send a message with no null termination. And we see that it crashed. I mean, I just followed the manual. I didn't do anything crazy up until now. So I know that I promised that we didn't use any of the big guns like WinDBG or GDRAW and all that stuff. But when I saw it, I was like, I must check what's going on here. So I looked into the stock trace, and I actually saw that there are some problems with the heap. Now, because, the, because this was pretty easy to do, first of all, I decided, OK, I need to report it to Microsoft. Before I try even to exploit it, I first need to report it to Microsoft before someone else will find it, because, I mean, that was very easy. So I did send it to Microsoft. And while I was sending it to Microsoft, I tried to try to exploit it. But before I even got to do it, Microsoft told me that I got an RCE on RDP client. <laughs> I mean, pretty simple. Pretty simple and pretty insane. OK, so that was pretty nice. I actually then later tried to understand what was going on, what was going on there. And actually, there is a one, an off by one vulnerability in the heap that kind of like messes up with the heap headers and stuff. Um, that's the story, and it's actually exploitable, and can, you can actually get an RCE by sending this message. So that was nice, right? But that wasn't enough for me. I wanted something cooler. I wanted to find something even bigger just by reading the manual. I mean, I just read the manual, and I got, and I got an RCE. I can probably find some, some more stuff there. So that's what I did. So remember that I told you about the lanes and the road? So one reason that they allow you to have multiple channels on the same tunnel is to support UDP. Now, as we, can, as we, as we probably all know, um, UDP is a lot, a lot more faster and allows you to create, to have better performance connection. So what Microsoft allows you to do with the RDP gateway 
is to create a secondary channel, which is a UDP channel. So by the end of creating the main channel, which is the TCP channel, you get something which is called a cookie. Now this cookie is the one, the only authentication mechanism that you are using to authenticate to the UDP, to the UDP socket of the RDP gateway. So all you get, so you get the cookie and you just send it back over the UDP socket and once it verified the cookie, you got authenticated. So I was like, cool, what is this cookie contains, right? So let's, let's understand what it contains. So the manual told us this is a signed and encoded byte blob that contains a, a struct called authent cookie data. Um, and this struct contains a lot of very interesting stuff. First of all, it contains the username. It contains the scheme which we are using, which is UDP. It contains the expire time, the server IP that we want to connect to, the server name, and the port that we want to connect to. So this means that we have a lane which we can actually control and divert to a different tunnel, to a different road. So if only we can manage to understand how we can forge this cookie. So that's what we tried to do. So we looked at the byte stream. Now, they didn't tell us how it's signed or how it's encoded, but once I looked at the byte stream, I noticed, a, from, I noticed a, a pattern that was very familiar to me. I noticed that the two first bytes were 0x30 and 0x82 in hex. Now, if you have ever played with certificates and PKCS, so I noticed that this is an ASN sequence. Now, it was, it's also very easy to understand if you convert it to base64 and you see that it starts with MII, which might sound a little bit more familiar to, to the audience. And then when, once I understood that this is an ASN1, I needed to understand what, type, what exactly type of encoding it was. And this was something called CMS, cryptographic messaging syntax. Now what is cryptographic messaging syntax? It's pretty simple to understand. Essentially you send the data, the signed data, along with the signature and the public key of the private key that you used to sign the data. So this means that anyone who gets this byte that contains the data and the signed the signature and the public key can actually verify that the signed data wasn't tempered with, right? So what do we do if we want to try to check if Microsoft worked correctly here? We just take, a, we do something very simple. We take the, we create a self signed certificate and actually put our own public key that was, that was signed using our self signed certificate in that byte and sign it with our own self signed certificate. And that actually worked. We actually managed to get an authentication bypass. Now, what it gives us? First of all, we get event viewer log forgery. Second of all, we get the full SSRF from the RDP gateway into your internal network. Over, and all of that over UDP protocols, such as DHCP, SNMP, DNS, syslog, whatever UDP protocol you can think of, we can get an SSRF into it. The third thing is network denial of service. Because this is a UDP, what Microsoft decided to do in order to work correctly, in order for that to be more reliable, I would say, for each time that you are connecting, they are sending three packets over the network to make sure that at least one of the packets will get there. So by sending one packet, I get an amplification of three times. Pretty, pretty cool. And all of that have been vulnerable since Windows 2008, which is pretty insane. Now, let's see it live. So as you can see on the left screen, um, I'm, send, I'm creating a cookie with all of the data. I'm EVD researcher and I'm trying to connect to besides LV server. Now, of course, and all of that in port 514, which is a syslog port. And I'm connecting to a broadcast address. Now what happens is that I'm sending three broadcast messages in syslog in the network with some data, which means that I'm gonna spam all the syslog servers in your network. And here you can see how I created a simple event viewer log which can, which can uh, make all the same people in your organization go wild to understand what the fuck is besides LV and who is, who is if the researcher. So that was pretty nice. So overall during the re this research, just by reading the manual, I managed to find four, four different CVEs. We had the RCE that we talked about. We had the authentication bypass that we talked about. We had another CVE, which was actually the fact that they were using an old version of TLS. 
they actually used a TLS 1.1 over UDP in their system. And there is a one last CVE that we cannot yet disclose because they haven't fixed it yet. And if you ask me what should be your key takeaways from this presentation, first of all, the fact that widely used protocols such, an RDP, such as RDP still have many vulnerabilities in them. And you need to be aware of that. Second of all, closed source isn't necessarily closed. I mean, we have the manual, we can use it and just find vulnerabilities with it, right? Third thing, read the manual. I mean, please, if you're a researcher, just read the manual before you try to open all those crazy tools and all the reverse engineering tools. And if you're not a researcher and you're just a defender, read the manual as well to understand where could be the problems in your system. And the last thing, patch your software because those vulnerabilities have been ex existed since Windows Server 2008. Thank you very much. All right, if anyone's got any questions, feel free to come up and use this mic. All right, thank you. <laughs>